Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to a whole bunch of Toronto Raptors news. That's right, we have the players the Toronto Raptors are interested in, other teams inquiring about our stars, a potential trade target that we should probably avoid going after after doing a little bit more research. So we're going to dive into everything, but before we do, you guys already know what's up. Pick up basketballs back all across Ontario, and we've been fortunate enough to partner with Javelin Sports to get you guys back out there on the court. And we have a big sort of announcement. We, we've been saying, we've been plugging, you can download the app in the description as well as the pinned comment, but we've been saying we're getting the Raptors Digest open session so you can hoop with myself, Riker, and Josh as we come in and out. Josh is going to be hosting the first one as Riker's out of, uh, out of Ontario right now. I'm currently in Newfoundland, but you guys, Tuesday... We are hosting our first ever Raptors Digest Play Along, and if you guys want to join, if you guys want to hop in, download the application below, and then use the code, all, all caps, Raptors-4872, it's in the description and the pinned comment, you can come hoop with us. We also have a big group chat in there, so we're going to be putting up updates, you know, for all of our Raptors Digest open sessions, right, and... Get some Raptors chatter. It's a fun little community thing in there. So definitely download the application if you want to be a part of that. And if you want to do other sports, if you want to hop in some other things, you can book out facilities left, right, and center. Right? What do we got pulled up here? Uh, the Playground Global. Six available bookings this week. The Playground Global in Oshawa. That one's in Scarborough. Play all those. Right? In Burlington. The Playground Global. FH Sports Center in Scarborough. You guys want to book some sessions? Get there and Javelin's doing a promotion where you get $10 off your first purchase. So the application is completely free to download, but if you're paying for those gym sessions, you'll get it for free on your first one, essentially. None of these drop-ins seem to be more than $10 from what I've looked through, right? You can hop in and essentially hoop for free if you download this app. So definitely check it out in the description in the pinned comment. But we have a bunch of stuff to dive into in the first Topic we're going to be discussing in this video is the Raptors making calls about Jalen Smith. Now, Jalen Smith is a name that has been brought up a lot amongst Raptors fans over the last little while, and closer to this trade deadline, his name has been brought up once again. The Raptors have called the Suns about Jalen Smith. This is from uh, HP Basketball coming out here now, and Jalen Smith is is a forward that was a former lottery pick for the Phoenix Suns, hasn't gotten a lot of reps, a lot of opportunities down there in Phoenix, and is a guy that has shown a, a heck of a ton potential this year and is a free agent this offseason, right? The Suns didn't pick up his team option, but the stats won't blow you away. Six points, five rebounds, uh, close to a block a game, 25% uh, from the three-point line, nothing crazy, nothing ridiculous, but the three-point shot, it's promising. He's doing this on limited minutes. He's a young guy with long arms, athletic, and could be a guy you can get on a bargain to bring in, and I'm interested in the Toronto Raptors inquiring about picking him up. Now, a month ago when Chris Boucher was struggling, everyone was calling Chris Boucher straight up for Jalen Smith. Right now, that would be stupid. It would be ludicrous. Chris Boucher is playing way too well for a raw prospect that might or might not be good when the Raptors are six. We're the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference right now. We're two game, two seeds out of fourth, three games behind the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? We are, we are, we are like that, right? So we're not trying to give up win now pieces for projects that could potentially be good. But if we can get him on the cheap, a big man that can come in, show some athleticism, maybe throw a couple seconds. Uh, we have two second round picks this offseason. Throw that the, the way of the Phoenix Suns. I think that would be a cool pickup for the Toronto Raptors. So we'll definitely keep our eyes load and locked and loaded on that. But that's not the only topic we're uh, discussing in this video today. We have a bunch of stuff. And the next thing we're discussing is the Dallas Mavericks calling about Pascal Siakam. Now, this one is a... Uh, it's pretty interesting, I must say, because Stinky Pinky, he's a guy that's on the Dallas Mavericks that uh, I know we've talked about a bunch last season, and, you know, for Pascal Siakam, I think that would just not make sense. For, you know, in, Pascal was injured coming into this year, but he's been more of an Iron Man. Certainly, when, an Iron Man compared to Stinky Pinky, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, when, uh, when you compare the two careers. Even though Chris Stapps is the center position, can space the floor. And if you talk to Dallas Mavericks fans, they say, always oh, better than uh, Pascal if you scope the Reddit. But Pascal, what where he may be less of a shooter, he's a better defender, better passer this season. I'd argue even with his limit lesser size, he's probably a better rebounder when he's hustling out there. He can handle the ball, he can switch. He does more with the Raptors need to do. No way I'm trading there. And then 
Obviously, we're not getting Luka. We're not sending them to the Dallas Mavericks for, I don't know, Dorian Finney-Smith and Tim Hardaway or something like that. Pascal's here to stay. We heard the report that the, that the Raptors don't want to trade any of our core guys. Pascal's the, the head of those core guys. He's having an All-NBA caliber season this year. Not going to happen, Dallas, unless you... Unless you come in with something huge on top of Chris Tapps Porzingis, unless you come in with something crazy, no, 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 no. But more news. More news is coming out in this uh, in this video. And speaking of which, speaking of a guy that uh, that's always always being brought up in this podcast, the young socialite, Ben Simmons. Get the young socialite music going. Right now, a new episode of the Young Socialite Watch. Ben Sim- the, well, the Philadelphia 76ers have made an offer to the Toronto Raptors in a trade for Ben Simmons. What was it now? Should the Raptors accept it? What, what was it? What would it be? Well, that uh, that deal that came up. That deal that came up. Let me get this. Uh, let me get this this trade up on the screen. They wanted OG Ananobi. Right, the Raptors are being floated as a potential suitor for Ben Simmons, but the Raptors have made sure they known in league circles they did not offer Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi for Simmons, and apparently that's what the Sixers were asking for. They were inquiring about Pascal and OG Ananobi going back to Philadelphia for Ben Simmons. I'm not trading one of those guys for Ben Simmons. I, I might be crazy. Clear, I think Pascal, most people are on board with that. Right, the level of which he's been playing this season, absolute beast, all NBA caliber player. I just went on that rant, but I'm not even giving up OG Ananobi for Ben Simmons. What does Ben Simmons do that much better than OG outside of you know handling and and facilitating? Right, OG's finishing has gotten a lot better this season. He's a thousand times better three point shooter defensively. I know Ben Simmons is in the DPOY rankings a bunch of times and all that sort of stuff, but. OG Ananobi is, is on another level there. He seems a little bit stronger, even if he is a couple inches shorter. I am I am I crazy for thinking that? Am I wild? Am I out of this world? Am I overvaluing our guys? Potentially, I do do that, but for the young socialite, no. So if they're asking about if they're offering us OG Ananobi and pa- or Ben Simmons for OG and Pascal, hang up that phone, Masai, block the number, do all that sort of stuff. Right, not gonna happen on my watch as, as your YouTube GM for the, the Toronto Raptors. But the next thing we're talking about is an even more crazy scenario. The Lakers desperately wanting Gary Trent Jr. The Lakers, they've been rumored, they're always rumored about players across the league, but they have a certain fascination with Gary Trent Jr. And you know, they they wanna they wanna make their offers, they wanna make make some trades happen, but they don't really have anything to offer, right? The Lakers are willing to trade key players to land Gary Trent Jr. from Toronto. What does key players mean? I saw in this article, they said, oh, they'd be willing to trade Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan and that that type of players. Yeah, woo love that. Love that for the Toronto Raptors, for our guy that was averaging 30 points per game in the la- for five straight games, right? We love that. The guy that's been our clutch scorer, right? Dwight Howard and those guys and Taylor Horton Tucker in a 2027 first round pick. Bring it here. This this deal is not going to happen. I saw on Reddit a discussion about would you would you trade Gary Trent Jr. and Pascal for Anthony Davis? No, and I, I'd be on the board. I wouldn't trade Pascal for Anthony Davis, given the injury history and just the the mess of what Anthony Davis is. But I'll definitely get flamed for that. I'm just very. I've always been very low on Anthony Davis. I just don't think he's that good. But you know, Gary Trent Jr. Unless you're getting LeBron or AD back, I'm not. I'm not even considering it. I'm not even I'm looking at it, thinking about it, just like the Ben Simmons deal. So that is what it is. But maybe they think because they could have got Kyle Lowry for Taylor Horton Tucker last season, they could finesse us for this one. No chance. No chance. They gave away all their draft capital for those guys. <laughs> Russell Westbrook, bring them, bring them to Toronto. Yeah. We already have an all-star. We have an all-star in Fred VanVleet, all-star point guard. But the final one, the final discussion we're talking about is stay away from Mo Bamba. Now, I've been watching people in the comments. We, uh, j- I dropped the video today on all the players that the five centers the Raptors are interested in trading for, right? That uh, that report that came out from Mike Scotto. And one notable mention was Mo Bamba, who is a guy that we've talked about on this channel. He wasn't in that list. And he's a guy that's been known to be available for a first-round pick. This season averaging 10 points, nine rebound or eight rebounds, 
a couple blocks per game, 35% from the three-point line. You look at this box score, given his age, his length, the fact that he's a viral song about him, why don't the Raptors go after this guy? Why isn't he the number one on that list? Over Jakob Pertl, all those guys. Well, if you want... <laughs> Full transparency. I'm not watching Orlando Magic's games. And I've, pro I've been baited the same way you guys have with the box score, the length. and everyone. Not everyone's on the Mo Bamba bandwagon, but a lot of people are. And I'm not saying not to trade for him. I threw the question mark in there for uh, specifically for to give myself an out. But, but, creeping through Magic Reddit. I saw I got posted the Raptors Reddit as well. But what... They don't like him. They don't like him. There's these comments. This is going to disappear too early as well. But they don't like his demeanor. He misses a shot. He'll put his head down and slouch for the next few minutes like a sad puppy. That's not Toronto Raptor style basketball. That's not what we like to see out of a, a Toronto Raptors player. Even when Precious is struggling, he's not going to be sucking and balling on the court about how he's playing and all that sort of stuff. Get this back on the screen. He doesn't play defense. He doesn't play offense. He's a terrible motor. He can shoot, but that's about it. We could trade him to the Shanghai Sharks, and we could still win the trade. If you go to the Orlando Magic Reddit, and you look at Mo Bamba, right, you search that on the side of it, they are absolutely trashing on this guy right now. Now, what does this indicate? And we also have, I, I want another, I got another one I'm going to dive into before I get my take. This one's longer, so I didn't, didn't get the cool graphic behind it, but he's only interested in uh, sh uh, shot blocking and shooting threes. Shot blocking comes at the expense of defense as he overcommits and overplays the weak side, just swats at shots, very low chance of going in the first place. Second comes at the expense of uh, scoring, anything in the paint, drawing fouls in the pick and roll. On a winning basketball team, he is useless. On a team that wants to compete every night, He's a ninth man, ninth man in the rotation. He he will be out of the NBA, for uh, before most people think he's just Thom Maker 2.0. He's a bad defender when Turner blocks shots. Teams don't like to attack him. Gobert doesn't even block that many shots. Teams just stay away. All that sort of stuff. And Bamba's being targeted on switches, probably even more than Vucevic. Obviously, former Orlando Magic guy. Right? I won't I won't dive in. Uh, get the whole whole spiel there, but. People don't like Mo Bamba at this point. And given the the home fans' accounts, obviously, all home fans, they're they're biased, they love their guys, and the fact that they're trashing on him this much, I guess Toronto Raptors fans are trashing on Siakam at this sort of level. Obviously, Siakam, even when he was being bagged on, he was not talked about this poorly. But, um, you know, this is something to indicate. Now, why I'm saying, why, why did I throw into the thumbnail, stay away from Mo Bamba, right? The question mark. I'm saying this because the Orlando Magic are looking for a first-round pick and f to receive Mo Bamba. And for a guy that doesn't have a motor, that's a Hassan Whiteside-esque defender where he has the, the physical tools, the blocking shots and all that, but is just bad otherwise, right? Miles Turner, like, the, for all the criticism I had on Miles Turner, right, it's to the extreme with Mo Bamba or the Hassan Whitesides of the world, right? That's the that's sort of the description there. Miles Turner is a good good defender, block shots, but isn't that mobile? It seems like Mo Bamba just doesn't even have a motor, isn't working there. So to give up a first round pick where the Raptors' first round picks are so so valuable, right? The way we draft, I don't know if that's a smart move. Now, given his poor play, right at the start of the season, people were very high on Mo Bamba. Right? Maybe if he's at a low, we can buy low on Mo and see what happens, throw him our development staff, rewire his brain, get him rocking. Look at what happened to Gary Trent Jr. on defense when he came here. Maybe it's still a good option, but these are all things that you have to take into account when you're picking up these players. So we'll see what Masai Ujiri ends up doing. It's going to be interesting. It should be a very exciting trade deadline. We had a wave of news. I wasn't sure if to make a bunch of videos about these, but I thought if I aggregate them all in this, get a little chapters going, then it could be huge. But you guys are the best to make this far. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, the Twitter, all that cool stuff. Also, if you guys want this fresh hoodie, fresh hoodie, we're doing our giveaway at the live tomorrow night. Hopefully someone claims it. It hasn't been claimed on the last two lives, so we're trying to give it away. But fortunate enough for you guys, if you missed out on the hoodie giveaway, right, if you weren't subscribed, you can get your name entered in the pool before tomorrow night. Make it happen, folks. But um, that's enough for me. Enough rambling. All the things I talked about, leave in the comment section below your thoughts. Anyways, also download the Javelin Sports app. I'm rambling at the end of here, but that's that's the huge one. and helps us out big time. And you can download these apps, right? Where are you playing from? Where are you to? Right? London Playground in London, Ontario. All these places, you know. I get that stuff rocking. Got my phone out there busting out. So, anyways... You guys are the best. Cheers.